Hi, intro to Calic. Hope you guys are having a great day. Um, we are going to start chapter four today um, in calculus single variable. Um, we're basically going to be using the first and second derivatives, um, learning how to use them to find out things about graphs um, and functions. So uh, I have to preface this video with my technology is not working very well today, so I'm sorry if there's a problem and something craps out. Sorry. But hopefully it'll work okay. Um, so uh, we're going to do a quick refresher um, about derivatives and what they mean. Um, our subat, um, we're going to be using first derivatives um, to find local maxes and mins. We're going to use second derivatives to find inflection points, and then just in general use both types of derivatives, first and second, um, to find what we call critical points. So we'll go over all that today. Um, and there's a way to kind of like visually see this on a graph, and then there's also algebraic ways, uh, or not, you know, a numerical way to figure it out with the function as well. So um, just as a refresher, um, we're going to talk about if f, that's an f prime, I know it looks kind of tiny, but that's a derivative, f prime, is greater than zero on an interval, then f of x is increasing on that interval. So it's going up. Um, and similarly, right, if the derivative is negative, then it's decreasing um, over that interval. So. <clears throat> Just kind of a, a quick refresher there. And also as a quick refresher, the second derivative tests for ca concavity, right? Which is like up, like concave up or concave down, right? Cereal bowl has a cereal in it and you're happy because you can eat your cereal or the cereal bowl is on the cereal's on the floor because your cereal bowl's upside down and you're sad. So f double prime, if f double prime is positive on an interval, then f of x is concave up. Um, and similarly, if f double prime is negative, then um, f of x is concave down. Okay, <clears throat> so new definitions, um, a critical point or a critical value. Um, a critical point of f of x is anywhere that the derivative equals zero. So what that's gonna look like on the graph is either a maximum or a minimum, um, or um, a pl somewhere where the derivative is zero. Um, and then, like, by definition, a critical value is um, the actual, the value of f of x at the critical point. So um, critical point is either, is the x value or just, like, the point where that um, max or min or saddle point occurs. Um, but uh, the critical value is actually the value of y at that point. So I wouldn't really worry about the difference necessarily between the critical point and critical value. Um, they're both kind of like the values at when the derivative is zero. Um, and it'll be generally pretty clear from the question what thing they're actually asking for. Um, so uh, if you have questions about that, let me know. Um, and then, uh, so then by definition, um, a local maximum um, is like a place where all of the y values around that point are less than that point. So, um, right, a local maximum would look something like, if I have a function like this, woo, um, both of, like I said, my technology, it's slow, which is really annoying right now. Um, <clears throat> in this particular case, um, this would be a local maximum because any y value next to it or nearby it is less than this y value. And then this is also um, a local maximum because all of the y values next to it are lower than this y value. Um, this would be, so similarly, Right, um, a local minimum would be the lowest point in an area. So, like the y value um, is smaller than the y values around it. So, this is a local minimum, and then this is also a local minimum. Um, 
there's all so there's like a local minimum and local maximum um, and that's just kind of like as you zoom in on a graph like it looks like a little hill or like a mountain or something um, or a valley <clears throat> you can also have a global max and min um, and that we're going to talk about in the next video but um, basically that's like the max of the maxes um, and in this particular case, there would be no max of the maxes because it goes on to infinity here. So your highest point would be infinity. Um, so it wouldn't exist. And then similarly, it goes down on this side. So there wouldn't be a um, global minimum. Now, if on the other hand, I changed it and I made like this side like that, then this would be my global minimum because it is the lowest y value of the entire function. Um, but it's also a local minimum, that's a local minimum, and that's a local minimum. So hopefully that makes sense. So <clears throat> again, this the definition of my local max and local min, that's not like mathematically rigorous, um, but it's kind of like generally speaking, that would be how you think of it. Um, and there's a way that you can like mathematically figure that out. Um, we're not going to necessarily talk about that today, but it's just kind of to give you a, an idea of the concept. Um, <clears throat> and then um, the next uh, d uh, definition is an inflection point. So um, an inflection point is actually a point on the graph um, where the graph changes from concave down to concave up or changes from concave up to concave down. Basically, it's a point where the graph changes concavity. Um, so, we will look at what that means as well um, on the graph and uh, within the function. Okay, so for example, on these um, graphs, we have a lot of these different, um, a lot of these different values. So, um, let's zoom in on this graph. So, we've got um, here, would be a local, oh my God, this is so annoying. Um, <laughs> that's a local maximum. Um, this is a local minimum. So you could label those as such. And we also have an inflection point. So right here, the, um, the concavity is, is, is down, is negative. So, um, but then it changes over here to concave up. So it actually right, probably about right there, it changes from concave down to concave up. So that's by definition an inflection point because it changes concavity. Okay, so also so you see how the derivatives um, play into this, right? A local max, your derivative, your first derivative is going to be zero because your tangent, the slope of the tangent line is zero um, right there. And then at a local minimum, same thing, your first derivative will be zero. And then the inflection point, because it changes from concave down, which would be a negative second derivative, to concave up, which is a positive second derivative, then that has to be um, a zero second derivative. Okay? Um, so take a look um, at the next two examples that I have there and try to label all of your critical points and inflection points. Um, again, sorry for the slow, ah, you're driving me crazy. Okay, bye. I mean, not bye. Just try to label your inflection points and, and, <laughs> and critical points. Okay. Okay. So for the second one, um, that point is the only critical point, but it's also an inflection point. So it's actually both. It's a critical point and an inflection point, which means F prime is zero and F double prime is zero. Um, and the other thing to pay attention to is like, what you think the sign of the first derivative would be and the sign of the second derivative. So if you look here, right, before the critical point, um, the function is inc is increasing, right? Um, so that would be f prime is positive. Um, and then after the critical point, it's still increasing, um, which still means that f prime would be positive. But the second derivative here before the critical point in this case, f double prime is negative because it's concave down, serial's on the floor, and then um, after the critical point is concave up, which means the second derivative is positive. So it's also good to label those as well because we're going to see, um, we're going to be kind of creating little mini graphs in, or, and like number lines to kind of see um, specifically what's happening on a particular function. Um, 
So f prime is positive, f prime is positive, f double prime is negative, f double prime is negative. I mean positive on that last piece. Um, and then the last one is um, a critical point at the bottom here, right? The, the slope there is zero. Um, but, and it's a local min. Um, on the other one, on the second one, um, it's a critical point, but it is not a min or a max. So uh, keep that in mind, that you can have a critical point that's not a min or a max. This one is a min, but it's not an inflection point, because here we have concave up, so f double prime is positive, and then over here, f double prime is also positive, so it doesn't actually change um, concavity. So this is a critical point, it is a local min, but it is not an inflection point. Okay, so how do we do this if we don't have a graph, but we have an equation? Um, so we have two tests. We have the first derivative test and the second derivative test. The first derivative test looks at, um, first you have to find the critical point. So you want to find where does the derivative equal zero? Um, and then once you find your critical point, you want to check to see on the left, is the first derivative positive or negative? And on the right, is that first derivative positive or negative? Because um, say for example, like we, like I said, we create a number line and say this is a critical value where f prime equals zero, right? Um, and say you find that on the left, f prime, like I said, really slow and really annoying. Um, but say you find on the left the first derivative is positive, and then on the right the first derivative is negative, um, then you would know it goes from increasing to decreasing, which would let you know that this f prime, um, your critical point actually, is in fact a maximum because it's going from up to down, from left to right. Okay, and it would be the opposite the other way. So if this was a negative and this is a positive, then you know it's going from decreasing to increasing, in which case then you know you'd have a minimum, um, a local minimum. Also, if it goes from positive to zero to positive, then you know that you don't have either a max or a min. And same way, if it goes from decreasing to decreasing to decreasing, you also know it's not a, a max or a min. Okay, so there you have it in writing. If f prime changes from positive to negative, then p is where a, so that your critical point is where um, you have a maximum, and if it changes from negative to positive, then it's a minimum. Um, the second derivative test tests for inflection points as well. Um, so um, the second derivative looks for a couple different things. So um, I'll just, I'll write them down first and then explain it. Might make more sense. Okay, so this is just the first part of the second derivative test, but hopefully it's kind of intuitive. So basically it says that if f prime at a point p um, is equal to zero, so that means we have a derivative, a tangent line that's flat, right? Um, and f double prime is positive, that means it's concave up and has a derivative, has a tangent line slope of zero which means that it has to be a local minimum. Um, and similarly, right, um, if f prime is zero at the point, but f double prime is negative, that means you're at the top of your bowl, right? Um, and so you would have a local maximum. Now, the last piece of this is that if f prime is zero and f double prime is equal to zero, then you actually don't know anything at all. So um, there's a, like, a lot of different possibilities for that. Um, so anyways, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so the rest of the page are just examples. Um, I don't have a ton of time to explain all of them, um, but I'm, I think you should try them, um, and then I'm going to write out the answers um, and explain whatever I have time for, um, and then you can ask me questions in class. Whew.